In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to host a Godot server on a virtual machine in the cloud. I'll just be going through the basics, so provisioning the virtual machine, adding the necessary software to run Godot, configuring its firewall so the clients can connect, and getting your server files on it. I'm going to host this server using Amazon Web Services, or AWS. There are many cloud hosting services out there, but as far as I know, AWS has the best bang for your buck. You'll need to enter a credit card when you sign up, but you won't be charged for free tier eligible services, at least not for the first year. The type of virtual machine, called an EC2 instance, I'll use in this video is in that tier. After the first year, it will cost you just over one cent per hour, or around $9 a month, American. I highly recommend implementing two-factor authentication. Someone actually managed to get into my account and racked up around $2,500 worth of charges before I noticed. But thankfully, I was able to get a credit on my account after reaching out to the support team. So after you have your account set up, head to the EC2 page by typing it up in the search bar and selecting it from the menu. Up in the top right, just left of your name, you can select the region you want to host this instance in. There is a lot going on here and it can be a little overwhelming, but it will become familiar with time. For now, we are only concerned with instances. This is where all the instances you've created will be listed. You can launch a new one by clicking this button up here in the top right. At the very top, we enter the name. Below that, we choose the type of instance we want by selecting an Amazon machine image or AMI. These are essentially templates describing the starting software to be installed in your instance, like the operating system. I'll be running an Amazon Linux machine for this demonstration. Next up, we pick the instance type. This is where we decide the amount of memory and number of processors our machine will have. T1 and T2 micro in the free tier. We might as well go with T2. Now we have the key pair. This will be used to connect to our instance remotely from the command line. Create a new one and give it a name. You can leave RSA and .pem checked. When you click create key pair, it'll be downloaded as a .pem file containing the key. To keep things straightforward, just put it in the folder containing the server export. Make sure you hang on to this because this is the only place the key exists. In the network settings, we first have the VPC this instance will be created in. A VPC is like a local area network in the cloud. Services created in the same VPC can communicate with each other using private IPs. Every AWS account comes with a default VPC, and we'll just use that. Then we select the subnet. Again, we'll just leave it at default. Next is the public IP. This is how we'll connect to the instance from outside the VPC and from the client, so make sure that's enabled. Finally, we have the firewall, referred to as a security group on AWS. This determines what type of traffic is allowed to connect to the instance and where from. For now, we'll just leave it as is. The only thing I'm going to change here is the name of the security group being created for this instance by clicking the edit button. A security group name and description field will appear. This name is descriptive enough, so I'll make it the description as well. Lastly, we can set the amount of storage. This is called Elastic Block Storage, or EBS. And we get up to 30 gigabytes with a free tier, but eight will be more than enough for our server. Now click Launch Instance, and we'll be taken back to the Instances page. Later on, after you've created an instance, if you notice that it's gone missing, there's a good chance it's just because your account has been set to a different region. It'll take a few minutes for our instance to be provisioned, and once it's ready, click on the instance ID. This will bring us to the instance summary page, which contains all of the instance's information and settings. Click the connect button in the top right. We can connect to this instance in the web browser by clicking connect under this EC2 instance connect section. We'll be connecting through the command line for this video though. Click on SSH client, and under example, there will be a command that's been generated for connecting specifically to this instance. SSH is the command to connect to a remote computer. It stands for secure shell. The dash i flake stands for identity, and the .pem file provides that identity. And at the end, we have the address we are connecting to and the user we're connecting as. Now copy this, then go to the folder containing the key pair and server export, and open the command prompt from there. Paste the command and hit enter, then type yes when it asks if you're sure you want to connect. And it's as simple as that. If you aren't able to connect, you might need to change the security settings of your key pair file. To do this, right click it and select properties, then go to the security tab and click advanced. At the bottom of the window that pops up, disable inheritance, then click on the users and disable every permission except read. Now on the instance, we'll create a folder for our server files by entering the make directory command followed by the name of our directory. That's all we're going to do on the server for now, so type exit to disconnect. Next we'll transfer executable and pack files to our instance. We can do this using the scp command, or secure copy. First type scp, then the dash i flag followed by the key pair file. After that, we enter the path to the files we want to copy, and at the end of the command, we put the location we are copying to, followed by a colon and a tilde date, then the path to our Godot folder. Once those are done uploading, we can SSH back into our instance. You can press up to cycle through your previously entered commands. On the instance, enter cd for change directory, followed by our Godot directory name to enter it. Now type ls to list the contents of this folder, and both our files are printed. To run a file on Linux, we type dot slash, then the path to the file. Our server won't run yet because it needs its mode to be set to executable. To do this, type shmod for change mode, then plus x for executable, then the name of our server x8664. We also need to install some dependencies on our instance to make it able to run Godot. The yum command is used to download and install these packages. This also needs to be done as an administrator. To run commands with admin privileges, you proceed them with the sudo command. So type sudo yum, then enter these dependencies. 
I'll leave these in the description so you can just copy and paste them. And now our instance is ready. There's just one last thing before we can connect. Remember the security group we created for this instance? Well, it still only allows SSH connections. In order for clients to connect, we also need to open up TCP and UDP connections for reliable and unreliable calls, respectively. So head back to the instance summary page, click security, then click on the security group. Under inbound rules, click edit inbound rules. Now add two rules. Set one to custom TCP and the other to custom UDP. For both, enter the port your Godot server is listening to under port range and set the source to anywhere IPv4. Now again, SSH into the EC2 instance, start the server, and we can connect our client from the computer. But if we exit the instance after starting our server, we won't be able to connect. This is because when you exit the instance, you also log out. And like with Windows, when you sign out, all your processes are shut down. To keep the server running after exiting, we can use the screen command. This will start a new process that runs in the background. So type screen, this will start a new shell, and start the server here. Now press Ctrl A and Ctrl D to detach from the session and return to the original shell. Then we exit from here. We can now connect to our server without being logged into our EC2 instance. Hopefully this video was helpful and thanks for watching.